Today I am creating five pieces of gorgeous DIY home decor. We are transforming everything from a birdcage to creating a wood and pearl tassel garland to updating this tray and cloche. Now, so many stores already have out their summer decor and I saw this train cloche at Walmart. It was just a couple of bucks. Now, don't get me wrong, I like toucans, but I don't like decorating with toucans, especially when they are in the vibrant Fruit Loop color. So, we're gonna change that. We're gonna start off with the tray portion. I found a gorgeous pink and silver roll of wrapping paper at Ross for only $3.99. I love the intricate design. It's so classy and it's thick, so it will hold up to the Mod Podge, which is what we're going to do. The first thing that I needed to do was cut out a circle that would fit perfectly over the top of my tray. So luckily for me, this top cloche is the perfect size that I needed. So I just took this cloche, I placed it right over the top of my wrapping paper. I got a pen and I traced out a circle. Then I got my scissors and I cut out the circle. Then I took my Mod Podge and my sponge brush and I put it on the bottom of the tray. I added a generous amount to the top of the tray. I spread it out evenly. I made sure I got the Mod Podge into all the corners around the entire perimeter of the tray. Once the bottom was covered in the Mod Podge, I took my wrapping paper and I placed it in the center. Then I got my kitchen scraper and I pressed the paper firmly to the tray. The kitchen scraper will smooth out the paper and it will also remove any air bubbles that are trapped under the paper so the wrapping paper can lay flat. Typically at this point, I will let the first layer of Mod Podge dry for about 30 minutes, but because the wrapping paper was so thick, I felt like I could move directly on to adding the top layer without ripping it. So that's what I did. Again, I added a generous amount of Mod Podge to the top and I spread it out evenly with my sponge brush. Now remember this stuff dries clear, so you want to make sure that your surface is completely covered in the Mod Podge. Once the wrapping paper was covered, I got a damp paper towel and removed the excess Mod Podge that was on the lip of the tray and then I let it dry overnight. Now you could leave it as is. It's a 100% improvement over the fruit loopy vibrant toucan design that was on it to begin with, but I wanted to take it a step further and I wanted to put a design on the top portion of the cloche. I wanted an intricate design, one that would go along with the wrapping paper that I have on my tray. So I found kind of a doily looking design on my Cricut Design Space. I had my Cricut Maker cut it out in a white vinyl and then I added it to the top of my cloche. This intricate design pairs so well with the intricate design on the wrapping paper. This additional detail elevates the tray and cloche to the next level. It looks so high-end and classy. It would be a gorgeous addition to any bridal party, baby shower, or you could just store some pretty plates and some silverware inside. So goodbye toucans, hello timeless elegance. My video today is part of the Friend Friday Hop that is hosted by Heidi Sambal DIY. Once you're finished watching my video, hop on over to the next video. I will leave a link in my description box below so you can get that link and go see what they made. Now the theme today is farmhouse, so I know that you will get a lot of inspiration and some great ideas from these very talented YouTube ladies. had this bird cage for a long time and I just didn't use it very much because it was black and I don't decorate a lot in black or use it as an accent color so it just kind of hid away in a closet upstairs but we're pulling it out today and we're going to change that. I know you guys know that I love using gold so we're going to paint this bird cage gold. 
I'm going to be using some Rust-Oleum Bright Coat Gold Paint. I took my birdcage outside and I sprayed a heavy coat of paint all over the birdcage. I got the paint inside, I made sure that each bar was covered in the paint, and I sprayed thoroughly around the design details to make sure that the paint got into each vacant space. And then I let my birdcage dry for 30 minutes. I sprayed a second coat of paint on the birdcage. I got around the top this time, and I sprayed the entire birdcage once again to make sure that it was completely covered in the gold paint, and then I let it dry overnight. I am loving the transformation of this birdcage already, but we're going to add something to the inside. Now it has a little pokey spike on the inside that you could add a candle to, and that would be beautiful, but I wanted to do something a little unique and different today, and I wanted to fill the center to overflowing with some beautiful florals. So instead of using that pokey spike for a candle, what I did was I got a square of floral foam, I covered it in the moss, and I pressed that onto the spike in the center of the birdcage. And then I got some roses in creams and pinks, and I poked them through the bars and into the foam, all around the base and into the center. I wanted some flowers to be coming through the bars, I wanted some to stay inside the cage, I added several varieties of pastel flowers, the majority of them are from the Dollar Tree, but some are from Michael's. Once this birdcage was filled to overflowing with flowers, I added some leaves to finish off the look. Again, some paint, some flowers, completely transformed something that was pretty plain into something that was absolutely beautiful and spectacular. Because the theme today is farmhouse, I wanted to make something a little more rustic than I usually do. So I made this wood sliced tassel garland. I got the wood slices at the Dollar Tree, some Dollar Tree pearls, and some twine tassels at the bottom. The first thing I did was I took my wood slices and I got a pair of locking pliers and I placed the wood slices in the pliers. And then I got my drill and drilled a hole through the center of the wood slice. I continued doing this until each of the wood slices had a hole in the center. Now I'm going to be adding some fishing line to hold my garland together. So I tied a knot at the end and then I added my pearls and my wood slices. I alternated between the two. I did have some leftover pearls at the end, so I decided to add six at the end to make it just a little bit longer and to add a little more elegance to our rustic wood slices. To create my tassels, I got a square of cardboard. And then I got my twine, my cream and gold twine. I purchased this at Target and I wrapped it around the cardboard square until I got the size of tassel that I wanted. Then I took a segment of this twine, threaded it underneath the twine that was wrapped around the square, and then I tied it around the center of the top. Once I tied a knot, I took my sewing scissors and I cut the bottom to create a tassel, and then I flipped the tassel upside down so the strands would cover up the knot. Then I took an extra piece of twine and wrapped it around the top portion of my tassel, and then I tied that into a knot. To attach my tassel to the garland, I took that fishing line that was poking out the end and I threaded it through the center of the tassel and then threaded it back through the bottom of the pearls and through the first wood slice. Then I tied the fishing line into a knot to secure the tassel to the garland and then I repeated the process on the other side. How cute is this garland? It was so easy to make. It's a great addition to this display because it brings in a little bit of that rustic farmhouse feel, but the pearls keep it elegant, so it fits in with the overall feeling of this display. I found this sign at the Dollar Tree, and what I loved about it was these beads at the top. I thought they were so pretty. And while the message is lovely, <laughs> we're going to change that. 
So the first thing that I did was I pulled out that backing from the frame. I liked the natural color of the beads and so I covered them up with some blue painter's tape to protect them while I was painting. And then I decided to paint it. And I'm painting it in a Rust-Oleum Serenity Blue chalk paint. I painted the frame in this blue paint. I covered each part of the frame. Then I let it dry for 30 minutes. I came back, I flipped it towards the back, and I painted the back side. And then I painted all over the frame one more time, and then I let it dry completely, which took overnight. Now I found some peel and stick wall tile. I thought that they would be a perfect backing. So what I did was I took the original back that was in the frame, placed it over the center of these sticky wall tiles. I got a pin and I traced around the original square and then I cut it out. At this point, I removed the backing and I placed that sticker in the center of my square. A few weeks ago, I did a mystery box challenge and Lisa from Row Country Crafts sent me an entire box full of stuff that I didn't get to use each piece. So I had a leftover piece and one of them was this family and it was from the Dollar Tree and it's gonna go perfect in the center of my frame. I'm going to paint it in a white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I just did one coat, it only needed one coat. I sprayed it thoroughly and then I let it dry for 30 minutes. I added some hot glue to the back of this word and then I placed it in the center of the frame. Because we have so many flowers in our design today, I thought it would be fun to add a flower to tie it all together. So I just got some hot glue. I added some hot glue to the back of the rose and I pressed my flower onto the top of the frame. I think that these plastic Dollar Tree choppy mats are so versatile. Every time I see them at my Dollar Tree, I scoop up a couple because I know I'm gonna be able to use them. Today, I'm gonna to be using this chopping mat and a Dollar Tree trellis to create a hanging planter. So the first thing I did was I took my trellis and it was green and that's a nice color, but I wanted to paint it white. So I took it outside and I used that same white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint and I painted my trellis. I did a thorough coat of this paint. I let it dry for 30 minutes. I came back and I tipped it to the side. That way I could spray the paint on the underside of the trellis and then I let it dry completely, which took one hour. To turn this trellis into a hanging planter, we needed it to hang by something. So I took some ribbon and I wrapped it around two of the bars on the side of the trellis. Then I brought it up and tied it into a knot and then I tied it into a bow so it'd be really tight. And then I repeated the process on the other side. And now that I have ribbons on either side of the trellis, it will be able to hang evenly. To make sure that my flowers don't slide out of this trellis, I'm going to use that choppy mat. We're gonna take that choppy mat and roll it really, really tightly into a cone shape. The chopping mat is perfect for this because it's flimsy enough that you can roll it, but it's thick enough that it will hold its shape and hold whatever we want to put inside. Once I had my cone shape, I placed it inside of my trellis. I just wiggled it into place until it was at the bottom. To the inside, I'm going to add some of those beautiful florals, the same ones that we used inside of our birdcage. I added some pink and cream flowers. At this point, I can hang it on my sign display holder. I made this sign display holder quite a while ago. If you wanna see how I made it, I will leave a link in my description box. What I did was I just took either of those ribbons and I placed them into some little clamps that I had on my sign display holder, and now it's hanging. And then I added some leaves to tie the look together. 
This piece was so easy to make and it's so versatile. You could put in some baby's breath, you could put in a variety of flowers, some ivy, you could hang them going up the stairs, you could hang them from a chandelier. There are so many things that you could do with this hanging planter. All of the projects that we made today were so easy and very affordable because the majority of the items that I used were from the Dollar Tree or I had like the birdcage I had at home, the tray and the cloche were from Walmart. So everything was very affordable. One big design tip I can give you is use paint for transformation. It is a cheap, easy way to get a big impact. You can take something that is plain and make it fantastic. Also, we used wrapping paper today to elevate and update a tray with a less than desirable design on the top. Just be creative in what you have at home. You are all so talented. I love reading your comments and hearing about what you have made at home. It inspires me, so thank you for leaving those comments. If you did have a favorite project that we did today, please leave me a comment and let me know which one it was. Now, don't forget to hop on over to the next video in this collaboration. Again, I will leave a link to that video in my description box. I hope you got some inspiration today. I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much for watching.